Hello and welcome to my lab. Today we're starting to build all the pieces to the Skittle sorting machine. Let's take a look at the CAD design. Here we are, the new Skittle sorting machine design. There's a lot here, so uh, let's go ahead and break it down. The feed bowl itself is actually now in two pieces so that it's easier to print. The front scoop here comes away. So we still have the feed wheel here spinning up, grabbing a Skittle as it goes and dumping it in the hole behind the uh, the pusher right here. And in the back, you'll see that we have a pulley system here that'll make more sense once we have it assembled. But um, there's a main shaft this connects through to the feed wheel and spins that. This shaft here is just an intermediate shaft so that uh, we can get two reductions going on between these pulleys. This is a motor that I've salvaged from my quadcopter. You saw it in the last video. Uh, and this is with an encoder on it here. Once the skittle goes in up here, it will go actually down and around. Let's uh, see if we can make it transparent here. Well, that doesn't help too much. Let's see. If you can see that hole, it has to go around the uh, shaft of the feed wheel. I'll make that shape has to go around the shaft of the feed wheel and then down into the bottom. So let's take a look at the bottom. If we can get there. So this tube here just guides the Skittles from the feed bowl down into the diverter. But the color sensor will actually slot in right here. So when I screw this in, this, the color sensor will be right in here and that'll hold it into place. The diverter module itself still works in the same way. Skittle comes down in here this orange piece here rotates, so it actually has only one hole to kick it to the side. But as it rotates, it selects a different one of these shoots here, which kicks it into a different glass depending on what color it is. Then we have the electronics. Here we have uh, the power supply, as well as the O-drive that'll go in here. The power supply goes in the back on these mounts here, and then the O-drive will go on the front mounts. The controlling microcontroller, yep, that's, that's what it is. The controlling microcontroller will go up here in the front. Uh, there'll be a display and an encoder knob, just like the last project we did with the 3D printer enclosure. So that'll be the same, you just rotate and select options on the menu. Okay, so there's a lot of 3D printing to do here. Everything you see here, except the pub glasses here and the extruded aluminum frame are 3D printed. So it's time to get started on, on that. Here we are mid print. We've been printing for about a week now and you can see the feed bowl is printing right here. We're gonna have to probably print for another week. It takes a long time to get all this stuff made. Uh, but over here you'll see, I've printed most of the uh, small parts first, so now I'm finishing those while the other stuff's printing, the big parts. So to finish parts, I'm still working on my process, but I I've, I've still like fiddling in the little cracks and imperfections with wood filler first, and then just sanding it down. But what I've started to do is add a little bit of water to the uh, wood filler and use a glove to uh, spread it around. That way, uh, the less viscous solution will actually seep into all the little cracks and it's a lot easier to sand. Then I'm going to paint them. And let me show you why it's going to take another week to print all the things. This is the feed bowl. The actual meat of the feed bowl, not the little thing that holds skittles. Yeah. Where is it? I'm not sure it shows up very well in here, but uh, this is the internal 
the actual printable area in my 3D printer. And this is the feed bowl base that contains all the mechanical workings of the feed bowl. It takes up mostly all of the space and it says that it will take six days to complete. It uses essentially a spool of plastic and also some PVA, the dissolvable stuff. Let me show you the layers here. That's a lot of plastic. So that's why most of the other parts are done and we still have a whole long time to go because this part's gonna take so freaking long. Also, that uh, dissolvable support is a lot more expensive than the regular plastic. So when I have large areas that need to be filled, I'll uh, just make a new part in my 3D CAD that fills most of the space. And that's why you see these large extra pieces that won't be part of the finished product. If you look at my uh, CAD designs online, you might notice those parts being called carrots. Uh, I always call them carrots mm, because I can. So, don't judge me. Our boys hope you'll enjoy these beautiful still image galleries. These photos chronicle the process of assembling the diverter module, starting with the chutes and adding on the braces, which connect the module to the frame followed by the motor mount, which includes the encoder, which has several fascinating steps. The shaft sleeve is carefully put in place using a spacing tool. Next, the shaft adapter tool is placed over the shaft sleeve. There are various sizes of sleeves for different sizes of shafts. Using an alignment tool, our boys next attach the base of the encoder. The rest of the encoder module snaps neatly into place, and now our boys will be able to tell exactly where the diverter is pointing at all times. We connect the wires that lead back to the O-Drive, and the motor is ready to join the rest of the diverter module. Our boys finish things up by inserting the bearing into the bearing holder with the help of a rubber mallet, and connecting the chute selector. Once it was all assembled, we added the final braces and connected the whole module to the frame. So the feed bowl base is finally done after the six days it took to print. It doesn't look like much of anything right now, uh, but that's because it's surrounded by support material. So we'll take as much support material off as is easy to take off and then use water to dissolve the rest. Here we see the carrots coming off cleanly and leaving the nice finished feed bowl. Well, the slimy finished feed bowl. Let's keep it in the water a bit longer. Well, this turned out nicely. It's still a little bit soggy from the water, 
I'll just leave it out to dry for a bit more. But it's all here. After it dries, I'll just use the same wood filler and sanding method before I paint it. And just like that, it's finished. As you can see in the pictures, some of the wood filler came off while I was sanding the primer, so maybe I need to find a different method of filling in those cracks. But overall, it still looks pretty good, still pretty shiny. And with that, it's finally time to put everything together. Here we see Bauer assembling the pulley mechanism for the feed bowl. He's attaching pillow blocks, which are mountable bearings to keep the shaft spinning smoothly. Here he's testing the feed wheel to make sure it spins well. Now he's sizing the shaft so that he can cut it down to exactly the right length. Here you see that we are using pulleys instead of a gearbox. We have an intermediary shaft which allows us to have a larger reduction ratio. And here we are attaching the motor.
it's the feed bowl. It's a little rough, so we're using wood fill to fill in the cracks and shine her up. Alright, we're getting close now. It was a lot of printing, but all the printing is done. Uh, this thing is working just as I planned for it to, which is kind of surprising. It's a really nice fit with all the gears and everything, or the uh, pulleys, I should say. So now all that's left to do is wiring. Uh, I've got to finish up the enclosures. I'm just painting those. I'll spare you that. Uh, so next time, we'll put the uh, electronics enclosures on and do all the wiring, and then we'll uh, fire it up, see if it works. So join us next time when we're doing that.